There's this interesting table called a two-way table, and it displays two different categories um, that were collected from the same group. So, for example, if a group of students were surveyed and they were asked two separate questions, like, for example, in this one, what grade, what grade did you get and did you study or not for the test, um, it accumulates those into a table, and that way you can see the amount of students that, that studied, the amount of students that didn't study, the amount of students that studied but passed, the amount of students that studied but didn't pass, and so on. And each number in the table is called a joint frequency. So how many students in the table above studied for the test and passed? So studied for, so you're looking for the point, the intersection of where studied and passed intersect. So studied and passed intersect at 21. The sums of the rows and columns in a two-way table are called marginal frequencies. So we have to find and interpret the marginal frequencies. So the um, there are going to be four answers. The first one is going to say that 22 students studied. And eight did not study. Additionally, we know that 23 students passed and that 7 did not pass. So those are the marginal frequencies. You're taking each row or column and adding them. New table. You randomly survey students in a cafeteria about their plans for a football game and a school dance. How many students will attend the dance but not attend the football game? So we're looking for the intersection of a going to the dance but not going to the football game. That's right here. So the answer to A is five students. find and interpret the marginal frequencies for the survey. So there's going to be four answers. 40 will attend the dance. 36 will not dance. 51 will attend the game and 25 will not go to the game. And again, I got those numbers by just adding the row or column. All right, in this example, we have to make our own two-way table. So first, we have to determine the things that are being surveyed. Well, first, they're deciding whether the person rides the bus or not. And then they're also determining the person's age. So those are going to be our two categories. So we've got 12 to 13. One of the trickiest parts, I think, is just figuring out how to organize the chart. And this is age. And then we'll do bus. Rides. No ride. Okay, so now we just go to the numbers. There are 24 people who ride the bus between 12 and 13, 12 people between 14 and 15, 
and 14 people between 16 and 17. Not riding the bus, 12 to 13 is 16. 14 to 15 is 13. And 16 to 17 is 21. So we're almost done. We did the two-way table, but we have to include the marginal frequencies. So now we all we have to do is just add them up. We don't have to interpret because it doesn't say to. So let's add an extra column total. And we now just want to total each, um, each little section. So riding the bus right here, if you add those up, uh, looks like 50. Not riding the bus is 50 as well. 12 to 13 is 40. 14 to 15 is 25. And 16 to 17 is 35. One thing you also want to make sure is that this total right here should be 100 going in both directions, right? Because 50 plus 50 is 100. And 40 plus 25 plus 35 is 100. If you don't get the same number going both directions, something is wrong. So you should always use this number as a check to make sure that everything is in the spot where it belongs in. Now, what example four wants us to do is do the exact same table again, but instead of um, number of students, which we put in this section, they want the percent of the students. And it's the percent of students from each age group. So make me a, a two-way table um, with just the setup, age, and bus, and then I'll help you fill in the numbers. Just pause the video and make me the grid. Okay, so this is the setup, and now let's look at example three and figure out what they really want us to do. Because it says for each age group, what's the percent of students? So what they're asking us is, well, let me throw this question out to you. How many 12 to 13 year olds are there? You should have said 40, right? How many 14 to 15 year olds are there? 25, right? So they're saying for the age group, what do these numbers represent? Is 24 a lot of 12 to 13 year olds or is it not a lot of 12 to 13 year olds? So we want to take the 40, the 25, and the 35 and make that our um, whole in terms of the way that we would figure out a percent and 24 and 16 and 12 and 13, those are going to be the parts. So I'll, um, I'll go down here and I'll create the first one. So what they want us to do here is figure out 12 to 13, riding the bus is 24. Out of 40 is what as a percent? Well, you should be able to figure that out. That's 60%. Not riding the bus, sorry, I have to keep scrolling up, is 16 out of 40. So as a percent, that's 40%. Okay, um, if you want to pause and try the rest on your own, you can, but I'll do it as well. This is going to be 12 out of 25. If you use the same strategy as above, 12 out of 25 is 48%. And this is going to be 13 out of 25, which as a percent is 52%. Now you should notice that these are adding up to 100%, and they should. Um, 16 to 17 is 14 out of 35, which as a percent is 40. And then we have 21 out of 35, which as a percent is 60%. And you should notice that they add up to 100 going across. 
And they don't add up to 100 going down because that's not what the question wanted us to use as the relationship. They just said for each age group, what's the percent? So the age groups should be 100. Okay, letter B, does the table you created show a relationship between age and whether students ride the bus to school? So as you see, as kids get older, they are not riding the bus as much. And you can see that this one's increasing while this one is decreasing. Obviously, they have an inverse relationship. So yes, it definitely does. So I wrote, yes, the table shows that as age increases, students are less likely to ride the bus to school. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.